Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. I hope all is well with everybody. I hope everybody is having a wonderful, blessed Saturday. I am up here about to decorate a peanut butter chocolate Reese's cake. Yes. We got some good old peanut butter frosting right here that I'm going to insert in between each layer of the cake first. It's going to be a three layer cake. So you guys come on in and sit back and chop it up with me while I decorate this cake. Again, this is a three layer peanut butter Reese's chocolate Reese's peanut butter. Can't forget the Reese's. And this cake is really, 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 really delicious, y'all. I mean, for one, the homemade peanut butter is absolutely, just absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. Um, and then it's layered on top of a chocolate cake. A chocolate cake. Now, this person actually, who asked me to make these cakes for them, actually needed two cakes. One of them I already decorated, and that was the Strawberry Crunch uh, Shortcake Cheesecake that a lot of you guys have already seen me decorate several times because that's a very very uh, that's a very very tempting and delicious cake that is high in demand <laughs> high in demand okay let me put my last layer on here top layer and so Since it is very demanding, I get those orders a lot. So sometimes when I want to decorate cakes for you live, I don't do those cakes. I just, um, when I get orders for other cakes, I do those live since you guys have seen me decorate those before. But this peanut butter frosting is really really good it's a combination of peanut butter creamy peanut butter of course you can't have no crunchy peanuts on the cake because that'll be pretty hard to decorate because the peanuts for one are so coarse your cake will probably get shredded up <laughs> to be exact but uh so yeah, you have to have creamy peanut butter, some butter. I use, uh, what kind of butter do I use? Uh, Imperial. I use Imperial butter by the sticks. It's more easy, easy to handle. It's easy to measure, you know, when it's by the sticks. So that's what I use. But how's everybody doing today? What's going on with everybody? What do you have planned for the weekend? I don't have much planned actually. It's been really rainy here in the Midwest. Y'all know I'm in Omaha, Nebraska. It's been really rain rainy here. I was about to say rainy. Wait with it. Wait with it. One of my favorite songs by Kaya. <laughs> I'm going to say it's really wainy out here. <laughs> but yeah, so I really don't have any plans, y'all. And by the way, this is a premiere, just in case some of y'all didn't notice. This is a premiere. So on premiere videos, that means we already... 
recorded it, and then we uploaded it, and then we're not live because it was uploaded first. I mean, because it was recorded first and then uploaded. But I am live with you in the chat. So if you want to ask me any questions or, uh, you know, talk to me about anything, feel free. I will be coming to y'all um, with another video today as well. Because I have to do a frozen theme cake for a little girl's one year old birthday party. And they want a frozen theme cakes and cupcakes. So that is on the plan. And I already, and oh yeah, I think yesterday, some of y'all was on here yesterday with me. So you know that um, they want the little girl's picture on there as well. So I'm going to put her picture on the cake, which is going to be really, really cute. It's the cutest little girl. I can't wait till I show y'all the finished work, the finished product, because the little girl, she's so adorable. So adorable. So what I'm doing to this cake, I'm just smoothing the sides. Then I'm going to work on the top of the cake. And then after I do the top of the cake with peanut butter frosting, I'm going to pour chocolate fondant on top of the cake. Yes, chocolate fondant. If you know what chocolate, if you don't know what chocolate fondant is, it's just candy chocolates. Um, well, you get some, you get like a fourth of cup of heavy cream and you warm it in the microwave for about, uh, I want to say a minute to a minute and a half because you don't want to burn it. You just want to warm it up, but you want it hot enough because you're going to put some chocolate in there. I usually use the Nestle's chocolate, uh, the little morsels. I use the semi morsels when I do mine. And melt it in the, in the cream. So you put the heavy cream in the microwave a fourth a cup, put in there about a minute to a minute and a half, depending on, you know, what type of microwave you have as well. And, and then after it's warm, take it out and you put the, put the, uh, Reese's, like, I want to say about, about a cup. A Reese's. I don't know. I never measure stuff. I'm just so used to doing it. I just pour in there what I think it needs. But it's about a cup. You need about a cup. Maybe a little more. But about a cup. And you put the Reese's um, in the heavy cream. And using a... I like to use a cake spatula. Like, you know, something like this. Like a cake spatula. And stir the chocolate a little bit. You don't want to stir, stir, stir till it melts. You want to stir it a little bit to mix the hot cream around. And then just let it sit. Just let it sit for a while. And then after it starts melting and breaking down, you want to put like one tablespoon of butter. Just one tablespoon. Not too much. Just one tablespoon of butter. Melt it in the warm chocolate. Now this is how you determine if it's warm enough. If you if you put it in the chocolate and you stir it around and just all this just melts and just smooth and just dissolves into the chocolate, 
then you know it's warm enough and you don't need to warm it up again. But if it is not all smooth and stuff like that, when you uh, put the butter in and it's just kind of chunky, that means you have to uh, warm it up a little bit more. So I will put the whole cup back in the microwave and just warm it up for about, you know, 10 to 30 seconds. You can do it at 10 second intervals if you like, just to make sure you don't overheat it because again, you do not want to burn the chocolate. That would not be good. So yeah. And then after that, you sit it to the side. Well, stir it up some more, of course. Stir it up some more. Make sure everything is dissolved and smooth. You don't want to see no butter, no white, no yellow, or I should say, because that butter is yellow. And after that, after it cools down, which will probably take about, mm, to be on the safe side, I would let it sit for like 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, that's pretty smooth around there. Yeah, I would let it sit for about 20 to 30 minutes. Somebody's trying to reach me, but I can't talk right now. I'm decorating a cake. And so, um, yeah, as I was saying, let it sit for about 10 to 20 minutes. No, what did I say? About uh, 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah. That will be perfect. And then once it cools down, you can do pretty much whatever you want with it. You can pour it on a cake to make a drip cake. Or you can like pour it on some parchment paper and make some kind of designs and let it sit there and harden up. And then after it hardens up, you could pick it up with like a spatula. Now, I already have some chocolate already made, already ready to go. So this is my chocolate for this cake. This chocolate ganache. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pour across the top of the cake and then just spread it around. Don't spread it too fast. Don't let too much get to the sides because you want to make sure the whole top is covered. Should I hold I scrape some of that back off into the cup? You don't want too much of a thick layer. You just kind of want a thin layer because it's going to harden up. Yes, child. Spread that chocolate like thus, like thus. Okay, now that we got almost all the chocolate spread, now what we're gonna do is make some drips on the side. So this is how I do my drips. A lot of people do them differently. But this is how I do mine. And there's a little spot over here that needs a little bit more chocolate. I can see it through the screen. Okay. So, with me, I just take my chocolate, put a little bit on the sides, 
and kind of like just let it run down the sides. Not too much though, unless you want a really long drip. If you want a really long drip, then you can put a little more. But I like my drips to be, and I'm gonna turn the cake around so you can see what I'm doing. I like my drips to be different lengths. So, I'm going to help push this one down. I like some of the drips to be short, some to be fat, some to be skinny. <laughs> you know, just like men. They like women, some men like they women short, some like them thick, some like them skinny. So yes, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm making some drips. I'm making my way around so you will be able to see the drips. And as you see, I'm starting the drips on the top of the cake. I'm just putting little droplets on the top of the cake and then just kind of pushing it gently to the side so it runs over the side but as you see on the top it has like little the little spots or the little humps where i uh started my drips those i'm going to smooth out those are going to get smoothed out so it won't be all humpy or bumpy or lumpy whatever you want to call it so yes i'm starting with <clears throat> some long, 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 most of these are long drips, and then I'm going to put some short ones in between. So, yes. Yes, 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 yes. So, again, this is a chocolate Reese's peanut butter cup with peanut butter frosting cake. We didn't already put the peanut butter on the on each layer of the cake in the in the middle of the cake. We didn't already layered the cake. Put peanut butter on the inside, just for those who are just coming in. Then I'm going to put like some little, little drips, little drips. Basically the spots where they're kind of like some thick gaps, I'm going to put like some little drips. And don't be surprised if you get chocolate on you. <laughs> like I am. Okay, there's not that many gaps in between. That looks okay. Alright, so. Back to the top of the cake. I'm just going to take the parts from the top of the drip smooth it around just kind of swoop it into the middle of the cake just kind of swoop it inward and then just smooth the cake around like such and then this chocolate is going to be covered with Reese's with a whole bunch of these. 
a whole bunch of Reese's. So, I'm going to wash my hands, and when I come back, oops, got to wash that too. Um, I'll be putting Reese's all over the cake and putting a border on the cake and on the bottom of the cake. So, I shall return. Don't you go nowhere. Oh yeah, and don't forget to like the video, share the video, and subscribe to my channel if you are not already subscribed. Thank you. Okay, we are back. And the cake has been sitting in the fridge so that the chocolate can harden up because you have to let the chocolate harden up for like 20, 30 minutes um, so that when you put your piping, when you do your piping and your frosting on top of the chocolate, it's not warm at all. The chocolate is not warm at all. It's then like totally cooled down so the frosting won't uh, slide off the side of the cake, <laughs> which I learned the hard way one time <laughs> long ago, but I did learn the hard way. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just piping a border around the cake to make the bottom of the cake look really cute. And then I'm going to put the same border on the top of the cake to make it look really cute. And then what I'm going to do, like I said, on top of this chocolate, we are going to put some Reese's peanut butter cups. Because this is, for those of y'all who just tuned in, a chocolate Reese's peanut butter cake with peanut butter frosting. With yummy, delicious, homemade peanut butter frosting that I am putting in the piping bags right now. But yes, this cake is about to travel. And the other cake I made for them, which I already finished. I made a, one of my uh, strawberry crunch shortcake cheesecakes. I already made one of them for the same party. That cake is chilling in the fridge. Matter of fact, right now, let me cut up some of these Reese's. I'm gonna cut up some Reese's. So I put them all over the cake. Oh, excuse me, I got the hiccups, sorry about that. Don't mean to be rude. But everybody who's coming in, again, make sure you guys like the video, share the video, subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. If this is your first time on my channel, um, I am a personal custom cake decorator, along other things. Um, I don't just do cake decorating on this channel. I review uh, primetime TV shows, reality shows, news, trending news, uh, world news. We've been, for the last probably three or four days, in between everything else that I do on here, we've been discussing the Amber Geiger case. The cop that uh, said she thought she was walking into her apartment after she had got off of work from her shift as a police officer and came to what she thought was her apartment, which was a, actually another apartment for a totally different tenant on a totally different floor. But she heard somebody behind the door and after he opened the door, she shot and killed him. So that lady was found guilty a few days ago. Uh, she was sentenced to 10 years in prison. She could have had, she could have got five to 99 years, but she only got 10. So, you know, a lot of people is discussing this uh, trial in this case and in particular the judge. Like I had did a video the other day when I was on my way um, to where I worked, my part-time job. And I had talked about, you know, how a lot of people are outraged because of what the judge did at the end of the trial after sentencing, how she had stepped out of her, uh, off the bench, grabbed one of her own personal Bibles, gave it to the 
defendant and prayed with her, read Bible scriptures to her, um, consoled her, hugged her. I mean, for some people, that was like a very emotional scene. Uh, Amber Geiger, the cop who was charged, you know, she got emotional. She cried, of course. And people around her, you know, that's on her team, they cried, of course. But a lot of people is furious because of the way it all went down. Like, a lot of people were saying, when the last time have you seen a white judge cry or hug or give a Bible to a black person? who received an unfair sentence. I mean, let me know. Because like I told y'all the other day, I ain't never seen that happen before. So I would like to know, you know, give me the name of the defendant. Give me the name of the judge. And you know, what happened? Timeline, when did it happen? So I can look it up. Because a lot of people is saying the same thing. They have never, ever seen something quite like this done before. And it was kind of like, some people was like, it's kind of like a slap in the face for the family of the defendant. I mean, of the, the victim. Because... They felt like, okay, first of all, the Lady Amber, she was guilty. You know, that was a given. Nobody ever doubted that she was guilty. She went to the wrong apartment, said she thought it was hers, shot the guy cold blood because she thought she was about to be attacked or he was, you know, robbing her place. When actuality, he was just up in his place chilling and eating a bowl of ice cream in his own dwelling place in his own humble abode so yeah you know they found her guilty but then they only gave her out of the 5 to 99 years she could have received man they gave her 10 years 10 years so not only are people saying Hey, what's going on here down in Texas? What's going on in these parts? Do y'all think that's enough Reese's on this cake, by the way? <laughs> they like, what's going on in these parts? Yeah, I think that's pretty good for right now. I got some more peanut butter frosting, so I'm going to put a little bit more frosting on the edges around the bottom. But... So a lot of people, you know, is confused. Like, first of all, like people were saying, you know, as a judge, you know, as a judge for United States courts, they saying this lady should know this is not something that you do. Like, you have to separate church and state. You have to. You have to separate church and state. Praying for the victim. Now, I understand that she would have done that in her chambers, at home, after the court procession, after, you know, she left, you know, praying for the lady that she finds God or that she, you know, uh, be okay while she was in there. But, I mean, the outrage is not just because of the lady judge. You know, her giving her the Bible and hugging her and praying with her and all that. But it's like she consoled her way more than she consoled the other family. The family of the victim. The family of the man that was murdered in cold blood for no reason. For just chillaxing in his apartment building. Like, so... Anyway, one second, y'all. Let me get up and find me a box for this cake. I'll be right back, okay? Okay, I'm back. 
I got a box for the cake, so I'm gonna show you guys the cake real quick. And as far as the Amber Dyer case, we're gonna talk on that again when I come to you guys later on in the day, but for right now, I'm gonna show you this cake. Hopefully you can see it okay. It's a Reese's peanut butter chocolate drip cake with peanut butter frosting. And of course, a lot of Reese's on top. So I'm gonna box this cake up, you guys, and send it off down the road because it's due out of town in about an hour along with some other cakes. <laughs> so I will holler at you guys later in a few hours, okay? <laughs> All right, Prime Time Squad, make sure you like the video, share the video, and also subscribe to my channel if you are not already subscribed. And in the meantime and in between time, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out. Deuces.